Hello Epic Hero. It's been a while since I talked about anything nerdy on this channel besides Steven Universe. I mean, I'm a nerd for Steven Universe. Star Wars, Star Trek, Stargate, even kind of Marvel has gone off my radar for a while. I haven't been watching a lot of movies, although, I, speaking of astronauts, I am very excited for Toy Story 4. I've always identified with being a fanboy, right? I identified with it so heavily that as it began to sort of not be mm, as much of what I was doing, I felt guilty about that almost, you know? I had boxed myself in as a nerd, and if I wasn't being nerdy, I guess I felt like I wasn't being on brand, and, but that just wasn't something that I was naturally doing as much of anymore. I've, I've heard of a lot of other people my age talking about this whole concept of being on brand and how like for some reason we think we have to figure out who we are, decide, and stick in that box. Like I'm a queer sci-fi and fantasy author and if I am not writing, am not geeking out, or am not being hella gay, that's not slowing down, but anyway, the other two then I am somehow, like, not doing the right thing. Uh, which obviously doesn't make any sense. And I've figured out that after I have come out to Austin and begun living my life and living my truth and living as an out queer by non-binary person, I have just not wanted to engage with fandoms as much as I used to. Which seems kind of obvious now that I think about it because I definitely used fandoms as a way to, and sci-fi and fantasy, as a way to escape my reality, as a way to live vicariously through the characters that I would write about or watch, and I wanted a huge part of their life, you know? Like, instead of watching people go on an adventure and save the day, I could, like, go on an adventure outside, go hiking. Like, I'm an adult, I can do that if I so choose. I have a car. If I want to go save the day, I can go find a cause that needs volunteers, go volunteer and go work on helping to save the day. So, this whole thing that I've had in my head, the back of my head my whole life about this boy who's in a small town and he just wants to go up on a quest and save the world, like, I am on a quest right now, saving the world. I'm not saving the world, I don't presume, but like, I am out of that small town now. I have left, you know, Tatooine and I have left my small little farm village and I am off like, in the rebellion, and I can go work on saving the day, I can, you know, master the work on mastering the force, in, but in my everyday life, like, saving money, budgeting, being there for my friends, and trying to volunteer with causes that I care about, you know, or like, educate myself on global warming, like, I'm kind of living in this universe right now. I had the thought the other day, uh, am I even still a nerd? I definitely am. I mean, look at this shirt. Uh, but I also, one of the, my main big picture pursuits recently is to study, study math, um, become more educated in pretty much any way that I can about medicine, about politics about, um, I don't know, just pretty much everything. I've always been passionate about reading and learning. I loved school and that hasn't really changed. If anything, it's gotten even more intense since I've come to the realization that, you know, you can't just believe everything you hear. You have to study for yourself and figure out what's going on, you know? And so, I mean, like, that's still a huge part of my identity. But the fanboy part has definitely calmed down a lot. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really feel like, besides Steven Universe, I haven't really felt in line with and aligned with a lot of 
fandoms recently. Uh, Marvel is one of the few exceptions of some of the franchises that I was keeping up with. Since I've been in Austin, me and my sister Alicia have been going to see all the Marvel movies that have been coming out and having a really fun time. Um, Loki is also one of the characters that I haven't engaged actively in the Loki fandom recently, but I still do really have a strong connection to Loki just from all of the queer, kinky fan fiction that I wrote about him when I was a teenager. I did watch Endgame. I was like almost not gonna watch it because I was on the borderline of being checked out of the fandom. And then I watched it though because I heard it was really good and I also heard that maybe there was a setup for like a Loki series in it and I was like apparently I have to watch this now and then I started hearing everybody saying that it was really 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 good. I actually felt things like it, it felt really real for the first time that a movie has in years. I um, felt like I was watching characters that I, not just characters but people that I knew who I had watched their whole lives, like, go through these super hard things. I felt like I and the people I loved and cared about were going through these traumatic, like, life-threatening, intense events. I think all the connections to family that they made in that film ended up touching a heart, my, pulling up my heartstrings with my own, like, found family and in Austin. <laughs> I think I understood a lot of the characters fear of, like, Tony Stark's fear of losing his family in a safe space that he'd found. I think I, I related with that, and also Hawkeye's journey of losing his family, because the found family that I've made in Austin uh, is basically my saving grace, my life, my world, and if I lost them, like, ah, like, that would... I was feeling all the real feels, y'all, but also the, the the callbacks, and the actors are obviously all really good actors, which was really nice to see. Um, Natasha. Oh, by the way, spoilers for Endgame, but Natasha uh, was performed really, really well. Black Widow has been one of my favorite female characters, but I have never related with her as much, but I felt like her performance in this moved that up a notch for me because she really, because of all that was going on, like, her hard outer shell cracked a little bit and you could see how hard everything that she was going through was for her, and I don't want to get emotional right now, but that was ouch. Like, I cried tears, and they weren't just tears of like, cuteness and sadness and um, fiction being touching. It was like I was actually upset. It was like I was actually kind of destroyed. And I, I was actually devastated. Like when Natasha... I don't even know if I'm ready to talk about this. But like when Natasha... Um, let's go when she's holding onto Hawkeye's hand in that scene. I know how she felt. And I know many people who do. She, first of all, she was not in a good place. And she wanted to go, I think. Um, yeah, let's try to move on from that pretty quick because I don't want to trigger anyone, but like, um, yeah, let's just say it was pretty heavy for me. And, I mean, the love that she showed for Clint in that moment, like he was the closest thing she said she'd ever had to a family, Again, tying it all back to the family theme. He was the closest thing she'd ever had to a family. And if she didn't fight to... That was her fighting to keep her family. Like, if she didn't fight to keep her family safe, then... 
like that, that then she wouldn't have had a reason to keep going. She needed her reason for living was to keep her family safe. That's what I believe. And that was what I saw in her performance in her eyes. Like, that's what I was relating it with. And the same way that Captain America, not Captain America really, because he just didn't have his family in that realm in that time. Um, but the same as Tony Stark had to fight, wanted to fight to keep his family, and the same as Hawker wanted to fight to keep his family, she needed to fight for her family, because if the people that we care about are our reason for being around, and that's what their reasons were, and she had to fight for him. He was all she had, and that was her way of keeping her family safe. You know, and she knew he still had people. Um, so yeah, all of that, all of that, it just, it, um, re I cried so much. I was just, I'm still processing things from that movie. Um, and it was really fun. Again, was I did get to see with Lucia. And she was also sobbing through the whole thing with me. There's so many other things to unpack. I can't even do it all in one video. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and say a couple other moments that I loved. Um, so, in the end, when Captain America hands the shield to Nightwing and the suit, well, first of all, I cried at the dance. <laughs> I may have written a soppy fanfic or two about... Captain America and Peggy finally getting their first dance. I was a huge Captain America fan girl in the day. And so when they finally got the dance, I did, I did, I did get emotional. But that aside, when Captain America hands Nightwing, I think his name is, the shield, I thought it was a really good moment because this old white man, essentially, is handing America over to this like young black guy. I don't think there's any way that, I, I haven't gone and searched the forums and read up on this stuff because I just, that's just not my go-to thing to do anymore. So I'm not even sure if anyone else is talking about this, but I don't, so I don't know if they were doing that on purpose, but I don't think there's any way they could have not done that on purpose. Like there's no way that in some focus group, somebody didn't bring it up and they didn't, weren't intentional about this. But this old white man is handing over America to this young black man and he asks him, um, he's like, this is yours now. And this young black guy is like, and he asks, how does it, how does it, how does it feel? And he goes, doesn't feel like it belongs to me. I'm getting emotional now just thinking about it. <laughs> and then, um, Captain America is like, oh, well, it does. And... They couldn't have done a more perfect, they couldn't have picked a more perfect Captain America and they couldn't have made a more perfect comment right there, right then. Um, I don't remember the rest of that dialogue, but everything that happened in that scene is so symbolic of right now. Like it is time. It's time for the old white men to hand America over to young black or young people of color, really, and, like, of course it's not going to feel like it belongs. I'm not one to speak on racial issues, like, because I don't have first-hand experience, but to the best of, I'm sure I'm not talking about this correctly, and, or in the best way, but to the best of my ability, of course it wouldn't feel, it doesn't feel like it belongs. America doesn't feel like it belongs to people of color. Um, right now, but it's about time that we started treating people of color like they belong here, like America does belong to them. And so that that's just a huge issue that is so much bigger than a little superhero movie, but I still was just, I got really emotional in that moment. Um, also, yeah. Also, also, this is, it was like kind of cheesy, I guess, 
But the moment when all of the female superheroes stand up together, like in a line, and like they are the other Avengers, this this little this little female power thing rose up inside of me, and I was just like, even though the film critic in one side of me was like, cheesy, this is like so cheesy, and like so contrived, the other like feminist female empowerment side of me was just like way stronger screaming oh yes oh yes like you just go you get it like fuck yeah there's so much more to unpack but I think that's all I'm gonna do for this video so basically the end of all of this is to say that I loved Endgame oh yeah I was gonna say I have not felt that many emotions and that sincerity and that intensity from a movie since Return of the King. Um, trying to rewatch those movies, maybe, if I'm emotionally prepared for it, because there were so many feelings when I first watched those movies. I feel like I could deal with a lot more angst when I was a teenager than I can now, but anyway, I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't had that kind of, oh my god, amazing experience with a movie since Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. I, I hope it raises the bar for like sci-fi and fantasy. I'm pretty sure Mar Marvel's definitely raised the bar for superhero movies. And as for me being a nerd, I definitely am one. But these days I may be leaning more on the side of the real world nerd. And I don't know why I feel like that's sacrilege and blasphemy to say, but it's the truth. I love who I am. I hope you do too. I, I don't know how much more I'm going to be talking about fandoms and franchises on this channel, like, as much as I want to. And I don't really know how much that's going to be. I'll probably review the Harry Potter series when I'm finished with it. Um, but I'm just going to continue to talk about my pursuits with math and possibly learning more about computers and like everything that I'm just passionate about in my life right now and you know when my books come out and writing them and all that and we'll just we'll just see what happens we're going on this journey together and that's why it's beautiful I hope you're having a great day I hope you loved Endgame and uh, thanks so much for watching until I see you again Always remember that we are epic heroes today and every day of our lives. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.